today's video we're going to be adding uh, some character to my animation so we want to add some personality to this character and to do that we are going to be using the screen on its face and making a nice little animation so to do that we're going to be opening up a new file and then adding uh, just deleting the default cube and adding in a camera setting the rotation back to zero and then the type to orthographic set the orthographic scale to one or two and then the uh, resolution to 1024 pixels just move this up a little bit and add in a plane and of course save your file now if you go into the camera view we can see our plane and if you go into rendered view we can see the world first let's set the color management to uh, standard and then set the world background to black add in a new material and set this to face uh, face background can move the camera up a little bit more and then we can add in a cylinder which will be the eye for our robot we can scale it up on the z-axis a little bit and grab the top faces and bevel these with the scale applied of course hit c to clamp it and then add some extra subdivisions something like this until you get a capsule shape shade smooth add in a new material call this eye and set this to emission to a little bit orange-ish can move this up and off to the side and hit mirror now if you go into render mode we can see this really cute face up there and this will be for the inside of our eye so make sure you have a circle cut out so you kind of know where it's going to be cut so of course this this part will not be seen uh, same with this part and this part and that part so just keep that in mind uh, but what we're going to be doing with this cylinder is adding in a new uh, shape key and another one and setting the other shape key to somewhat of a blink or something like this just move it inwards with the procedural selection tool and now if we hit the value we can see that our character blinks so in the rendered view it will look something like this we can also move it up so basically what we want is to make an animation of this so hit i on the value and hit i on the location and rotation and then just move a little bit forward and set this to one and then we can move it up a little bit and back down again just loop this a couple of times maybe make it a little bit faster something like this and then letting him look around a little bit so something like this and back again and then we can loop it right here at 160 frames and it already looks pretty cute uh, something else we can do is we can add in a grid in front of this so just a plane that's subdivided a bunch of times set this to wireframe and now it looks like it's kind of pixels you can also add in a subdivision and i think this is pretty much it of course it's not perfect since uh, we want to mimic leds leds but it doesn't really work since we cut it off right here if you really want to do this you can probably watch a cg matter video on this but for me this will work pretty fine so now we can just render this as an animation. So just search for your folder and give the mp4 extension in the name. Then set this to ffmpeg video and encoding to mpeg4. And then just render this. It shouldn't take too long since so it's Eevee. And now it's finished and we can go back to our project. So now that we're back, we can go into the timeline and in the shader editor in the shader editor we want to go to our screen and make sure we select our screen and as i said in the last video we kind of uh messed this up a little bit well we, we didn't mess it up but i wanted to do something else but i just showed you a step in between you you, you don't have to watch this video to uh, make a nice model uh so it's pretty cool that you're here uh, thank you for watching but what we want to do now is just add the video right here and to do that we are going to need our video so just add in a image texture or you could just drag and drop it in which i'm going to do just take your mp4 and drag it in and it will set up the image texture for you 
we can add this to the base color and assign this material. And as you can see, nothing really happens. That's because our UVs are all wrong. And if I'm correct, uh, our eyes will never go to the place where our UV is. So we need a new UV. So we can just unwrap this. And as we can see, it's kind of rotated. So we can fix that in the UV editor. We can also scale it up a little bit and scale it down if we want to. And now our guy has some eyes. To make this move, we need to click auto refresh. And now our video will play. As you can see, we can also set this to cyclic. So it actually uh, extends if we are farther than the 160. So this is also looped and it will loop again right here. So then you can pretty much have your timeline as far as you want without worrying. And that's also why we made it loop. If you want some bonus points, you can go over to your uh, material and make this an emission. Set the color to the color and emission to the surface. And then you can crank up the strength to something like five to actually have it emit some uh, light. In Eevee, you, you could turn on bloom and this will add a lot to your scene. I'm not saying you need to have two eyes, you could also go for one eye or something else entirely. It's all up to you. But this video was just a really quick explanation as to how you can add some character to your animation by having this face animation. And it's finally time to render him. So the first thing we need to figure out is what we want. Of course, I really like uh, nature scenes, uh, but something like this could also work where we just move the ground uh, and make it kind of contrasty. So we have some things to look at. So we see the movement. Uh, something we can do is just uh, set our 3D cursor by pressing shift and right mouse button. And then we can add in a empty uh, sphere and we can set this as our focus point. Go over to the camera and add a object constraint uh, track to and select our empty. And now our camera will be focused on the empty. And we can position the empty so our camera always focuses on the right part. And now we can move our camera and get all these different angles without doing too much about it. An angle like this is pretty cool. And then we can see our character. Something else we can do is just select the armature and add a target bone. And then just sample one of the bones. We want something like the uh, bottom bone for all the movement. And now the camera moves with the bone. You can set the weight to something like 0 0.04 or the influence, I mean, to something low, which is something that we can see the camera actually move with. So something like 0.2. It really adds in that extra type of animation. So you can actually feel that we're following this character, which is really cool. Something else we want is probably to scatter some things on this plane. And because this, this is such a big plane, we can add in a new plane and then just scale it to something like uh, this. This should be where our character walks. And then we can add in a particle system set to hair advanced rotation set this to the normal and in the render we can add in some rocks you can download rocks wherever you want but i'm just going to spawn them in from my add-on something like this i only need one it doesn't have to be very uh, interesting set this to object and then select our rock and then we can set the randomized scale and randomize the number we can show emitter off set show emitter off in the viewport display and the render display and just have a few rocks not too many and now we can move the plane to signify movement so in the timeline we can hit i for the location and rotation and again and then we just need to time this of course set this to linear a little bit too slow i think so we need to add some more movement and this is also too slow this is more like it this looks more like what i wanted so as you can see right here where we get a contact point we can see that it barely moves faster than the ground which is really great because this contact point should be where the ground stays stationary uh, relatively and it does that pretty perfectly it might need to be a little bit more a little bit faster and just a tiny little bit but it, not too much to worry about this is pretty much perfect I nailed that pretty easily actually. But those are the things to look for when you are making a walk animation. Is that uh, things on the ground stay relative the same to your contact point. Since uh, that's your contact point isn't actually moving on the ground. Uh, the rest of the body is moving. So it's kind of falling forward. And that's why you have the movement. You're kind of, uh, you're kind of catching yourself on the ground by falling. And then you have time to move your leg 
to a different position. So just make sure that the contact point stays stationary relative to your objects on the ground. So that was my tip for the walk animation. Uh, right now we can preview this and see our character walking with some relative things to uh, signify the speed. And if we want, we could probably add in a simple uh, asphalt texture. So just add in a Voronoi texture, set this to the bump and set the color to black, blackish with a color ramp so we can uh, change the colors. And now we have a more realistic render, uh, not really realistic, but uh, just instead of on a perfectly rough ground, just some noise scattered in and this will be a really nice render so let's just render an image just find something on the timeline that we want maybe something like maybe something like this so we can hit render then go over to the compositing select use notes and then uh, control shift select our render layers and we can preview it and now we can add something like a uh, glare and set this to fog glow so we can add some nice bloom right there add a u correct or use saturation value node and change the U a little bit and the saturation and the value create a more moody render you can also add in a bright contrast node and change the brightness and the contrast for an even moodier render so something like this and then we have a really nice render of our robot we can go over to the viewer nodes and then go over to the view and hit our uh, nodes and so click save this image to save our render and this is my final render i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something and i hope to see you in the next video which will not be a series but i really hope you enjoyed this series so goodbye